Ansible playbooks are Ansible's orchestration language. It is in playbooks where we define what we want Ansible to do. It is a set of instructions you provide Ansible to work its magic. So for example, it can be as simple as running a series of commands on different servers in a sequence and restarting those servers in a particular order. Or it could be as complex as deploying hundreds of VMs in a public and private cloud infrastructure, provisioning storage to VMs, setting up their network and cluster configurations, configuring applications on them, such as a web server or database server, setting load balancing, setting up monitoring components, installing and configuring backup clients, and updating configuration database with information about the new VMs. Let's take a deeper look at how playbooks are written. Remember, all playbooks are written in YAML format, which is why we spent some time earlier getting our hands dirty with YAML. A playbook is a single YAML file containing a set of plays. A play defines a set of activities or tasks to be run on a single or a group of hosts. A task is a single action to be performed on a host. Some examples of a task are executing a command or script on the host, installing a package on the host, or performing a shutdown or a restart operation on the host. Let's take a look at an actual playbook. Shown here is a simple playbook that contains a single play named Play1. The goal of this play is to run a set of activities one after the other on the local host. Remember that the host you want to run these actions is defined at the play level. In this case, we just want to test on the local host, which is why it is set to local host. This could be anything from your inventory file. So basically, a play is what defines what action you want to do on what hosts. All the tasks listed under this particular play will be executed against those hosts, and those hosts could be any number of hosts, or in this case, it's just the local host. Next, we run a set of commands one after the other on the host. First, we print the date, then we run a script on the server, followed by installing the HTTPD package using the YAM module, and finally starting the web server using the service module. Now, if you don't understand what each of these tasks does exactly and how it is defined, don't worry, we are going to take a better look at each of these uh, in, in a few minutes. But for now, I just wanted to give you an idea on how a particular Ansible playbook looks. Let's look at this sample playbook format and try to relate it to what we learned in the YAML section earlier. I have made a minor change and split the list of tasks into two separate plays. The YAML file, which is our playbook, contains a list of two plays. This is noted by the dash. So the dash indicates that it is an item in the list. So the playbook is a list of dictionaries in YAML's terms. Each play is a dictionary and has a set of properties called name, host, and tasks. Remember, these are properties of a dictionary and so the order doesn't really matter. So even if you swap the position of name and host, it's still a valid play. However, this is not the same for tasks. The task, as you can see, is a list, as denoted by the dashes. Lists are ordered collection, so the position of entries matter. If you swap the position of entries here, we are instructing Ansible to start the web service first before installing the HTTPD service which is not a desired solution. So the YAML format is key while developing playbooks. You must pay extra attention to the indentation and structure of this file. The host parameter indicates which host you want to run these operations on. Remember, the host you want to perform these operations against is always set at a play level. 
Currently, this is set to localhost, which means that all these actions listed under the task is going to be performed on the localhost. You could have any host or group specified here, but you must ensure that the host or group is first defined in the inventory file we created earlier. The host defined in the inventory file must match the host used in the playbook and all connection information for the host is retrieved from the inventory file. Now there is no hard rule to use all the hosts defined in the inventory file. You could choose one or multiple or a group or multiple groups from the inventory file in the play. But you really don't have to use all of them. Whatever host you have defined in the play, in the playbook, should be defined in the inventory file. Otherwise, it's not going to run. Let's look at what a module is. The different actions run by tasks are called modules. In this case, command, script, yum, and service are all Ansible modules. There are hundreds of other modules available out of the box. Information about these modules is available in Ansible documentation website, or you could simply run the command ansible-doc-l on your Ansible system. To get familiar with the basic playbook structure in the upcoming exercises, you simply need to know the command module. Later on in the next section, we will go through some other basic modules in more detail. If you look at the command module, you will see that you could simply specify the command you wish to run, in this case, date, and Ansible will execute that command on that particular server. Finally, once you successfully build the Ansible playbook, how do you run it? It's very simple. Execute the Ansible playbook command and specify the name of the Ansible playbook you just created. And that's it. If you do an Ansible playbook dash help, you will get to know more about some additional parameters available for this command. We will go through some of them in a later section. So go ahead and get your hands dirty developing some Ansible playbooks in coding exercises. We are just going to get you familiar with basic playbooks and playbook structure. The whole idea is to get you familiar with how a play is defined and what it is and how tasks are defined and to understand the difference between them. We will focus on more realistic use cases in the upcoming lectures, but for now, we will stick with real basics. So check out the upcoming coding exercises section and good luck.